Hi, it's Melanie here and thank you for joining me. In this video, we are going to cover chevron chain in the form of a lariat. The lariat we're going to be looking at is woven Lynx lariat, which is a pretty long lariat with um, chevron chain that are interconnected like chain links and that the tips of them are hanging tassels woven in peyote stitch and fringing. And the part we're going to look at today and to learn is are the chain links uh, using chevron chain. And the neat thing with this design, I think it's a very practical stitch that you can do in this form and create, I think, a lot of uh, things. It has a lot of potential. Uh, bracelets, it can be necklaces, and in this case I created it in a um, lariat. So, okay, let's get going and I'll cover with you how to do the links in woven links. Okay, so here we are. This is the lariat, and this is the technique we're going to cover right today is the, these links here. And a couple of things. Well, these links are attached to this tassel uh, with a little, uh, a little stitch of peyote. Um, so what I did in these links, using size 15, I alternated the colors, and I also used a connector bead that's a different color. And one nice thing about that is you can... Um, kind of mindlessly do it. There's a lot of links on this. If you can see, um, I'm going to just show you kind of the amount of links. And that's, a, that's quite a bit of links. So um, what I would do is watch a movie. So if you decide you're going to do something long, uh, make watch a movie and or a bracelet, you could do the same thing. So let's look at um, the ways these are done is... Um, in using the connector bead, it's, it's simply the ed, the legs are four, the edges are four. That's the count. And I'm going to show you an illustration of the pattern for woven links. Essentially what we want is this. We're going to end up doing 18 chains. Whenever you're going to close a tubular piece of chevron chain, you're going to need to, you start with a bottom. I call this bottom and a top only because if I were looking at this, these would, the edge set would be sitting on the bottom and this edge set is sitting on the top and from, from the reference point of where you're sitting. Um, and I would start with a bottom, but I'd end with a top so that I can close it. So we're going to close this with two chains. In order to close it, I'm going to close with chain 19 and 20. And I'll show you how I do it. We're, we're essentially going to take these chains and wrap back around and close it. And I'll demo that for you. Uh, but I wanted to show you sort of what we're doing. Just the key things to remember is it's a four bead edge and a four bead leg. And in this case, my legs, the first and last bead of the leg, uh, are blue. So that's my contrast color. Those are my connector beads. All right, let's get started. I'm going to show you kind of what I'm doing. I'm using size 11s. I'm going to use the blue-green beads for my connector bead. And I, I suggest start off um, with a uh, stop bead. Stop beads are very helpful, and then just remember to take it off at the end. So at this point, I have a stop bead at uh, size 11, and I'm going to begin my stitching. So let's start off. It's a connector two of my main color, connector color, four bead edge, one, two, three, four, my connector, these are two of the main colors, and then another, actually in this case I'm not going to add a connector because I'm going to connect back here. So let me do that. I'm going to connect back into the first bead, and that's the first chain. I'm going to lay that down so you can see it. Oh, maybe I'll pick it up. So you can see that. Now I want to show you something. I know it sits wobbly um, when you're stitching it, and that's normal. I'm going to show you the diagram. The diagram you're looking at is this one. And um, let's do another one. We're going to do a top chain. So I'm going to do a four bead edge. One, two, oh, that's the wrong color, isn't it? One, two, three, four bead edge, connector, Two, and I'm going to stitch into the connector bead. That's a top. So I'm going to continue this for a little bit so you can kind of see, get the rhythm of it. 
and I'm simply stitching top and bottom chains. And the top and bottom chains are identical in the number of beads that are picked up. So it's a really nice repetition that gives you the freedom to sort of do other things uh, like watch a movie while you're doing it. All right, that's just um, so there we do. We have we have two bottom, two top, and that one thing I do want to keep my tension tight with chevron chain because it's a netting. It's a form of netting, and it does dis want naturally to become loose. It's a very fluid, organic stitch. Um, I tend to always take my thread and pull it towards the work that I've done already. So in other words, um, by doing that, it tightens up the work nicely. So let's continue. We got our four. One connector, which is my contrast, and two main. I'm going to move this out of the way just to give us a little more room here. Okay, so you can kind of see it's it's starting to really shape up nicely. So I know if there are 18 chains I'm looking to do, then um, it's going to be 9 on top and 9 on bottom. So I could, instead of having to count both top and bottom chains, I could just count the bottom chains. I know um, if I end with a top chain, okay, and I and I, I know that I always end with. If I'm going to close the tube, I want to be ending with a top chain. Um, I'll just count nine bottom chains, and I know then I'll have eighteen. Another thing I do, if you notice, I wrap the thread around my finger and I'll hold it like this. That's very common for me to do. I'm trying to, to show you the stitch, so I, I don't tend to want to do that. But I think it's a good idea for me to show you what I do in order to keep my tension. If I want it, if I want the tension relatively firm, um, that's, that's something I do. And it helps to keep the tension firm. So just for a couple of rounds here I'm going to show you how I hold my thread gives you a sense of what I'm doing to manage the tension uh, as you probably know in most seed bead weaving work tension is very important uh, in terms of what you're trying to do you may want light loose tension you may want tight tension you may want medium tension it just depends on what you're working on all are important if you all if all you do is tight tension then it's kind of like having one tool in your toolbox uh, you're using a hammer to uh, open up to unscrew a uh, box you know you don't you need all the ability to do and manage tension in a way that is perfect for whatever you're working on Okay, um, now we want to close it, and the way I'd like to do that is I like 
to fold it over. I'm going to fold it so you can kind of see it like that. I'm going to pick in, in closing, I'm going to first close on the edge. So I'm going to pick up the four. And I'm going to stitch. Now, if you look, the, how do you know to stitch? Think about the thread, where the thread is going. I want, I have a top, I know I want a bottom here. In order to get the bottom here, I have to pass the needle into this bead heading in this direction. So one way you can kind of tell uh, what you're doing, you could look at the picture. The picture does tell you that. Um, let me show you that. Okay. So the picture shows you, if you look at 19, um, we're, cut, we're on this side here, 18. We're picking up the four and we're heading in this direction up. Um, we're going to be exiting this connector. We're going to pick up beads five and six, which are the main color. We're going to connect again. We're going to pick up one, two, three, four, and we're going to head back down. And then this is where I kind of firm up my work. So let's try that. So we have the bottom edge. Now I'm going to pick up the two main color, and I'm going to pass diagonally, stitch on the diagonal, now if I know I'm over here, you know it has to be over here. In order to make a triangle, I have to pass this way. If I try to go that way, it's going to be a square. So think about it like that. Chevron chain are a group of triangles stitched together, basically, the form of them. Okay, so now we have a nice, if you look here, I've got a top and a bottom chain, and it looks real nice. The only thing we need here is we need an edge set. So let's pick up our four edge beads. I'm going to connect now. Just be careful. Don't catch your um, don't catch your stop bead. And I'm going to tighten this up again. One way to do it. Notice how I I grab my threads. I just hold them between my fingers, and we're going to pass the needle. I like to pass my needle back down through here. Let's try that first. You can let it go. Just work your tail thread out. Okay, we're going to pull, we'll pull that out in a moment. But at this point, I just want to leave it so you can see kind of where we were. At this point, we now have a completed link. And um, what you would do is you would tie this off. Where I'm going, to do, I'm going to go ahead and tie it off so you can kind of see what I do. I do like to reinforce a little so I make sure my tension is good. So I'll pass back through a couple of the chains and the, le the legs. There's a leg. And I'll pass through the edge pass through a leg and then I'll start um, weaving off and essentially with chevron chain the vast majority of times you do have to make half hitch, half -hitch knots. Um, with peyote you can kind of weave through beads, get away and everything's nice and tight but what I'll do, I'll go ahead and put one here, I'm going to make a little half, a little slip, a little half hitch so I make a circle and I guide the knot down and I do quite a few because uh, because it's such a fluid organic stitch it's loose you don't want the tension to become loose and you don't want your work to come apart so here's my third one I'll probably do four um, the bigger the beads the more I do the looser the work the more I do um, and you have to make sure you guide it down see it's wanting to jump over into another bead I guide it down and it's, it's jumping over here. I see that. I don't want it over there. So I just carefully work it back into where it needs to be and then pull it tight. All right. And um, I'm going to go ahead and stop there. That's good. Okay. So we have that tied off. Uh, and I'm going to move here. And I'll go ahead and clip this for now. I want to show you. How, so we're going to link one together. <clears throat> We'll link one together. So we have one. You'll end up, you know, take the stop bead off and tie it off. Let's continue. Let's do another one. We're going to start again. And this time I'm going to use this, the dark one, as the connector. I got them switched around. That's fine. We're going to have an opportunity to do it again. Okay. Um, I didn't put a stop bead here, but it's okay. We're going to, I would normally do that, but for time's sake, we will. 
I may just cut this short just so you can see. I made it make these a little smaller. Let's see how we go with time. Same thing, same pattern, just different colors. I did do them in different colors uh, because, um, as you can see, I thought it was fun to kind of look at. You could do it all solid. Uh, it just depends on what you want and what your what you know style you're after. Okay, let's continue just a little more. As you can see, it gets into you get into a flow, into a rhythm. It was very relaxing and um, just fun to do. So partly, I enjoy the process just as much as I enjoy getting the piece done, and it makes it very enjoyable to do both. Which is getting it completed and being able to wear it is just as much fun as actually doing it. Okay, let's just see. I'm going to see if I have enough here to close it. Let's just see. Uh, that's another thing you could do. Just make small ones. We'll make it a little bit bigger, but we won't do this one as long, just so that um, I can show you. We're going to just close it the same way, just making sure to insert um, the links. Now, I have been known to close the link and forget to do the insert, so I I have to wait till the next one to do it. It doesn't matter because you're doing so many. Uh, you will eventually get to the one that you forgot, and you'll be able to add it into the necklace. And that's um, that's fun. So let me just see. I want to see how long this is. I think we can make this. We're going to do that. We're going to make a, a shorter one, and we're going to make... Um, one that is a little longer. Let me add some more beads here. Okay, um, I have, we'll do one more because we need a top. Remember what I said, we need a bottom. We'll end with a top and that will put us in a position to be able to close easily. All right, so let's let's go ahead and, and connect the links together. I do um, mine are normally woven off completely, but the, for the sake of time, we're not going to do that on that. Um, let's. So what I do, same thing. Just make sure that you connect them together um, on this one. And this is a neat little thing, which is you might want to do long and short. That's another really great idea. Which is you could even make it shorter. It's um, it's a nice little design effect, I think. You could do that, and it'll give a whole different look. So same type of closure. I, I kind of put the, the last chains near each other. And this is when it helps to have a stop bead. You can see this, this uh, is not as tight, but because I do this a lot, I can probably just hold it with my hand. And I'm going to connect. I'll add two. I'm going to connect over here, and then four, which is the edge set. Remember, we do the edge, and we'll connect over here, and then come back. Being careful, if you're using the stop bead, not to catch the stop bead in your work. Let's do that. Okay, great, we did it. And then let's, um, let me just tie off a little bit so I can kind of show you it it helps to tighten. Weaving back through a little bit definitely helps tighten up what you're working on. And so I'm going to go this way only because I can feel it's a little loose right here. And I'll and I'll make my on this one I'm going to make my half hitches 
over here. So we're pretty good. I'm going to pass through here and I'll cut this. Okay, great. So there you go. I think that's everything that you need to know about putting these together. Uh, in this case, we did one that's long and one that's short, different from this. It's also larger beads, so just to give you the context. But it's a super fun uh, stitch to do. It's a lot of fun to sit and watch a movie and do it. And you could create bracelets with it too. All kinds of interesting things. Okay, thank you for joining me. And I hope that this um, video was helpful and that it gave you a little bit more information about how to stitch chevron chain and in particular how to stitch it into links. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you in the next video.